the, the resolution of the aluminium detector is beautiful, okay? You can see from the width of these lines. Uh, this, is the, this is one line, and as you see by eye, these are 50 kilo electron volt. This width is about one kilo electron volt. The, the resolution of the germanium detector is essentially one keV, which is even better than what you get with the tellurium or with the bolometers. From the point of view of the energy resolution, germanium is the best. Conservation of trauma is the worst from the point of view of the background and of uh, the Q value, but it's the best from the point of view of the background because the germanium detector has a superb energy resolution. Exo uses xenon. The mass can be easily made higher. This is the first generation experiment, it's already 150 kg. Uh, next generation exo experiment will be ton scale. But uh, being a TPC with liquid and uh, getting a signal of uh, getting a signal of uh, light and the charge, the best you can do is 3.5% energy resolution. 3.5% is not one keV, but it's something like uh, what is it? It's 35 keV with one MeV, but it's 2.2, so it's 70 keV sigma or something like that. So the resolution is a factor 50 worse, which much more than compensate the large mass. Okay, so you have a factor 20 more mass, but you have a factor 30 worse energy resolution. But the EXO 200 was able to do a very good measurement of 2 neutrino. Uh, the EXO is a xenon TPC. Okay, so I don't go back to the details of what a TPC is, I said many times. In this case, we have liquid xenon, pure enough to allow the drift of the electrons. You have a photomultipliers to collect the light, very similar to dark side or to xenon experiment. That's why I said that the physics is very different, but the technology of the neutrino double vector decay and of dark matter experiments is the same. It's so true that the next generation experiments would like to do both. There are experiments who plan to build the TPCs with Xenon, for example, in which you search for black matter and the input for the neutrino is double beta You cannot do it with argon because argon is not a neutrino is double beta decay candidate. But Xenon is, so if you feel an experiment like Xenon 1 ton, instead of Xenon, with xenon final and 36 enriched, you could have the same detector searching for both kinds of fields in principle. And it's not obvious that it's easy to do, but in principle you can do Exo 200 made a beautiful measurement of the two neutrino, beta beta, uh, through this nice shape. You see that the graph results are very similar to the one that we must really have obtained with the molybdenum, they got it with xenon, with a measurement that is has an error of 10%, but it's 10% mostly systematically. So in principle they could uh, do better, because statistically they have a very precise number, then they have some systematic story in the energy calibration, or I don't know exactly what the system actually come from. But statistically, they have plenty of events. And of course, they looked in the region. You see how worse is the histogram. The energy resolution is much worse, so everything is, is broad up. It's broad, okay? You don't, you don't have these neat lines as you had with the germanium. Uh, the, the thallium line, because of this, uh, becomes this very broad. This is the 2615, but of course with the resolution of 50, 60 TV, it becomes that wide. The neutrino is double beta decay region is this one. Of 
course they see no peak, so uh, they put the limit, and uh, that is the limit they get. The mass is uh, somewhat lower than the clapper, mm -hmm. but due to the matrix element problem, they cannot exclude the because if you put the, the most favorable matrix element for xenon and the worst favorable matrix element for germanium, you still have a smaller one. So you cannot yet exclude, because being different nuclei, this very large uncertainty in the nuclear matrix element is the problem. That's why I said at the beginning, this is one of the most important problems for the successful neutrino double beta decay program, you have to solve two problems. Of course, you need one experiment to see a signal, and this is an experimental problem, but then you definitely need an improvement of the, the knowledge of the nuclear experiments. Another technique, more rough, but could have some advantages, is uh, to uh, dissolve xenon in liquid scintillator. The origin of this is because of orexina. Because uh, I am not covering orexina as an experiment because it's a solar neutrino one. But what orexina has done is to achieve by far the best background ever obtained in any low radioactivity experiment. The, the core of the orexina detector is definitely by several local gravities, the less radioactive place ever been. Which means that in principle you could have a very clean experiment if you put xenon and dissolve in a liquid scintillator. I say this because in principle, but not Kamlan, because Kamlan does not have a liquid as pure as Bolexino. This is an objective statement. And uh, so they tried, but they still have a very large background. I must say that they also have been very unlucky. Because they had already more background than Borexino, about the factor of 100. But then they had the tsunami. This is not, of course, their fault. And the tsunami created the, the nuclear accident. And the nuclear accident polluted the whole Japan with the radioactive elements in a very severe way. And this peak they see, this peak they see is uh, essentially silver 110, whose origin can only be nuclear reactors because the lifetime of silver 110 is relatively short, something like a few tens of years. So they have plenty of the plenty, well, of course, plenty compared to very low background event uh, experiments. Uh, you can go to Japan safely, don't worry. <laughs> I'm just saying that compared to normal background, the amount of silver 110 is many orders of magnitude above what would be natural. It's like the cesium story. Everybody in newspaper, newspapers say, okay, the, 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 the strawberries are radioactive because they have cesium uh, or cesium above some level. But the exact statement is that there should be no cesium at all. You can see some cesium, which is completely harmless, but it's due to general This is the same. You have a nuclei that should not be there because uh, its lifetime is very short. You see it, and of course, you can immediately say that just because you see it, it came from a nuclear activity. So during the contamination, during the installation of Kerman Zeiner, there was the tsunami, so their vessel has been contaminated by the accident, and this is clear in the data. They have been, however, been able to measure neutrinos, uh, two neutrino, beta beta, and they got a consistent result with that. Good. Tellurium. Tellurium is uh, essentially the program developed in 
Italy, in Gran Sasso, with uh, a several generation of uh, detectors. Uh, first, kilogram scale detectors, then uh, tens of kilograms, so called the Policino, which was the very first prototype of Cole. Then a new prototype with a different technology but similar mass was developed, uh, was developed uh, and it's called Quare Zero. And Quare uh, will be about 90, no, not about, will be 90 million times of uh, exactly identical to Quare Zero. Which is going to start with the end of this year or beginning of next year. Um, this is uh, the technology. One, about 1,000 crystals, about one ton of total mass, but it's 206 kilograms of tellurium. Uh, the advantage of bolometer I already said, you can have a very good energy resolution. Uh, the main difficulty of Quora is the fact that this cryostat is the most powerful cryostat ever built. It will be able to cool down 20 tons of material at 10 millikelvin, allowing the readout of 1,000 electronic channels, which is a difficult thing, because of course, if you are completely well shielded, if you wait long enough, you can cool down any mass with any power, just be patient. But if you want to have 1,000 electronic channels connected, which will dissipate some power unavoidably, you need a very powerful cryostat to keep the temperature low in that condition. Uh, these are examples of the technology. The construction of the tower was done uh, in a completely clean environment. The tower, the crystals, the copper, once cleaned, never see the air. So it's very difficult job to do because you need to use a globe box. And uh, you start mounting the tower copper and then you have these copper frames that hold the crystals and you mount a tower and uh, for example the signal are to wire point the thermistor that is glued in each crystal to these copper frames. All this is done automatically with several machines that have been designed and built on purpose for this activity. Everything is done standard in this kind of physics. For example, the bonding is very familiar. You are, I'm sure, you are familiar with wire vortex because it's, well, it's used a lot in high energy physics. But there is no bonding machine in the world that can bond a vertical plane. All bonding machines are designed to bond horizontally because, uh, of course, if you ask them why you want to bond that way, you should go this way. And uh, they, of course, they don't understand that you have a peculiar uh, region. The, the tower cannot be bent. If it, if, it, if it is bent, it destroys itself. Because trying to minimize the amount of material, it is designed so that it can withstand this kind of uh, force, but not a horizontal force. So the tower will never be bent in their lifetime. And so, you are Yes, yes, yes. So the tower is, mount, is mounted layer by layer, but these copper frames can are relatively stronger when you pull this this way, but they will immediately break if you try to bend the tower. So the tower cannot be bent, never. It will never be bent. It will be mounted vertical and will stay forever vertical. And so we had to do the bonding vertically. Which, may, which means that we had to buy the machine, rotate it, and adapt it to work vertically. Just to 
give you a, a feeling of the fact that when you do things very non standard, then everything requires special care. Quare uh, is ready, this is the first Quare Zero Tower ready to go. Uh, these are examples of the resolution. I go quick because you don't need, but you can see this very nice spectra with very good energy resolution.